So let's go back to our flash file, which contains our dog symbol. So remember the scene itself doesn't have anything in it. And just for a bit of house cleaning, I'm gonna go down here to my output panel and right click on it and hit clear. And that'll clear out the output panel. And I'm gonna go back to my timeline here so I can see it. So I should have a blank keyframe, scene one, nothing in it but I've got my dog symbol over here and the linkage reads dog which shows that it's uh, there's a cl an external class being created that can be accessed by our action script now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new symbol insert new symbol I'm gonna call this um, red button upper camel case for my library I'm gonna make it a button I'm going to Actually, I don't have to do this. I don't have to export this for action script. I could and it wouldn't hurt anything, but I'm going to leave it unchecked in this case. Now remember that the dog, because it's going to be accessed directly by action script, is needs to be exported. But red button at this point is not going to be accessed directly, so it does not have to be exported. And you can change your mind later and you know there are reasons to do either one, but just wanted to point that out. So right now, red button, it's a button, okay. So here we are, here's the button timeline, here's our symbol space out here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a button here in my up keyframe. I'll make it red, just so I don't confuse people. I'll fill that up there. And I'll go ahead and just insert keyframe insert keyframe and insert keyframe so I have the exact same thing in all of my states here <clears throat> and for the over state I'll go ahead and switch that to green let's say and for the down state I'll take this whole thing and I'll use my move tool or the arrow and then just cursor key it down a couple of clicks and a couple of clicks to the right so it'll appear to shift over and move and then I'll just leave the hit state as it is because remember the hit state is just invisible so we should, we're fine there so now I've got a little red button and I'm gonna go ahead and now go back to my dog symbol okay so I'm in scene one dog just to be clean about this, I'm going to add another layer, and I'll name it button, and I'll go ahead and drag an instance of red button out onto the stage. I'll drag it on top of my dog there. Well, I could put it anywhere, you know. I'll just go ahead and put it there. Why not? <clears throat> All right, and. I'm now going to, this is the important step that if you don't do this, nothing will work. You have to go up here to the properties and remember this is we're in the dog symbol and we've dragged an instance of our button into the dog symbol. And now we need to name that instance up here. So uh, I'll give it the instance name red button and because it's an instance name I'll use lower camel case. All right. Now, also very important, or else this won't work, I'll save my file. Save. Go back to the action script just to look at it. We haven't done anything new. We still have our uh, event listener is still based on the dog movie clip. So let's go ahead and test the movie. So the constructor function is run. The symbol has been, the, the movie clip has been put onto the stage. And the dog is in the movie clip. And now when I click the button, I'm actually getting, uh, I'm triggering the event handler, which is interesting. And if you think about it, it's because it basically interprets that button as being part of the overall dog movie. But also notice if I still click on like the eyebrow of the dog, I also trigger that, whoops, um, trigger that, 
yeah, had a little rave there, uh, trigger that event handler. So I can click on the eyebrow of the dog or click on the button or the tail of the dog as long as I uh, click exactly on the black lines here, the teeth, and I trigger that. All right, well, let's say I just want the button to be clickable and I don't want the eyebrow to be clickable. Let me clear this out again. Clear. And I'll test the movie again just to make clear what I'm talking about. So right now if I click on the eyebrow of the dog, I trigger the event handler. Let's say I just want it to be, so I don't want that to happen. I just want the button to trigger the event handler. What do I do? Well, here we go. If I go back um, to my script here, I'm going to go to the event listener. And instead of listening for clicks on the entire dog movie clip, I'm just going to listen for clicks on the red button instance that is within the dog instance. So dot notation is the way that I do that. I say dog dot red button dot add event listener and I can leave everything else the same because I haven't changed the name of my event handler. If I wanted to be a little bit more persnickety, which is probably a good idea, I would go ahead and change the name of my event handler. Why don't I go ahead and do that right now? Well, actually, before I do that, I'm lying. Let me go ahead and test the movie. So save, test the movie. Okay, now if I go and click on the eyebrow of the dog, nothing happens. Anywhere on the dog, nothing happens, nothing happens. But when I cl click on the button, I'm triggering the event handler. So we've just changed our code. We've just made it so only the red button is clickable and not the rest of the movie. And we've used dot notation to do that. But what is dot notation again? I think most of you are already familiar with this, but just to reiterate, Dot notation is a way to describe folders or nesting. Make this a little bigger so we can see this. So it's a way of locating something. So we could say earth.northamerica.usa.oregon.jacksoncounty.ashland.sou.marion80.room110.frank would be a way to locate Frank. Or uh, we could, you know, we're most familiar with this through file structures, file hierarchies. So the dog project is here on my Mac. It's located within the folder dog project, which is within the desktop, which is within Minata, which is within users, which is within Mac OS 10. So you would write that like this, Mac OS 10 dot users dot Minata dot desktop dot dog project. So dot notation can be used as a way to access things that are nested. And so you could have you know, movies nested within movies within movies within movies if you wanted to. Um, so here we go. We now have our clickable dog. In the next video, or a clickable dog button, in the next video we'll go ahead and make this button actually do something.